Give you an idea of where we're standing right now and why it's important. Over here about that is a photograph of the Glenwood Hotel. We are standing in the ground floor of the Glenwood Hotel, just about here. The Glenwood Hotel was one of the finest hotels in the West. All wood, and you can see it's a multiple building. In 1945, boiler blew up in this hotel and caught it on fire, burning it completely to the ground. Uh, you can see from this photograph up here, this is a picture of the hotel the next day as it continues to smolder. Now the beam above it where it says fire is the last remaining part of the hotel that was charred in that fire. Everything else was completely destroyed. So that's why we're here. This property is now owned by Billy Bullock and his family, and they have a retail store above our heads called Bullock's, for good reason. So I think what we'll do is we'll start at this case, and then we'll work our way around the museum so you can see some of the artifacts that you are welcome and invited by the Bullock family and the Historical Society to come see these exhibits. So, Josie, if you want to... Welcome, people, to the party. Well, welcome. Thanks for being here to enjoy this amazing history. All right. All right, let's look at this case right here, first off. What you see here is a photograph of Doc Holliday, probably taken in the Hotel Glennon just prior to his death. You can see how weasoned he looks and uh, how very ill Doc died. Uh, of consumption, what they call back then, which we know today is tuberculosis. On the wall above us here is a painting of Doc. Over here on this side are photographs of Doc as a young man and a little bit older. And above here is a copy of the Tombstone Epitaph newspaper, which was released the day after the OK Corral gunfight. The paper was owned by the mayor of Tombstone, a guy named John Plum. Next in this uh, case here, Doc Holliday's father was a uh, Confederate soldier. Doc was born in Georgia, and his father served in the Civil War. These are relics from uh, the Civil War. This is the Battle of Fredericksburg, and some of the bullets from uh, the uh, uh, Confederate Army and the Union soldier. President Lincoln said it was a terrible massacre. Next to it are other denominations of Confederate money and bullets, uh, cartridges from 100 plus years ago. In the next case, over here, this is kind of fun, in the Allen Street, which is where the Josephine uh, Saloon is in the Cosmopolitan Hotel, it was lined with bottles and uh, gambling houses, and these uh, fellows would drink way too much uh, adult libations, which we know as excess hooch, and uh, they had outhouses behind them all these saloons. So these men, when they had to uh, relieve themselves, would go into the back of the building where the outhouse was, drop their drawers, and barely stand up, and as they did so, they would drop poker chips and silver dollars and other stuff down in the outhouse pits. Later on, the outhouses, uh, fortunately, were no longer used, and they were covered over. And then people who identified themselves as outhouse excavators went down into the pits 
and dug out the uh, poker chips and silver dollars. So in this case here, you'll see a lot of silver dollars from 1881 and some of the chips that were pulled out of this uh, outhouse pit. Fortunately, they've all been washed thoroughly, so you don't have to worry about it when you come to the museum. Next up, this is a barrow table. This original oil painting, watercolor painting, was done by a man named Buck Taylor. Buck Taylor is uh, a actor, a renowned actor. He was in the series Guns in Gunsmoke for many years. In addition to being a marshal and tombstone, I'm also a professional Old West stunt gunfighter. When I was performing at the National Western Stock Show in Denver, uh, Buck was at that show, and Buck gave me a portrait of the actor who played Kirby Bill Brocious in the movie Tombstone. Uh, his name was Howard Booth, and you can see he's wearing a two-gun rig here. Uh, he was the leader of the outlaw band Cowboys. Next to that is a duplicate of Kirby Bill's two-gun rig that you saw in the uh, painting of a moment ago. Uh, plus the spurs and rover's cuffs, and I wore this during the reenactments of the OK Corral here in Glenwood Springs uh, for many years. Next to that, how are we doing, Josephine? You okay? <laughs> we thought we'd have a little fun with this display here for the young at heart and for the youngsters who come and visit the museum. It is a complete set of 1950s cap guns that were owned by uh, this little boy. This picture was taken in 1952 when he was three years old and taken by his parents who claimed that uh, uh, this man, Michael Chandler, once a cowboy, always a cowboy, and something tells me he's never changed. But these are all his cap guns plus caps 
uh, that he had as a little boy, and we thought it would be fun to display them here in the museum because we're all young at heart. Um, one of the uh, unique parts of the exhibit is on top of the case. And there was a movie of, uh, years ago called A Christmas Story, where the uh, little boy actor in the movie for Christmas, all he wanted was a Daisy Red Rider BB gun, but he was having to talk all the adults in his life into getting it because they were certain if he ever got a BB gun for Christmas that he would, quote, shoot his eyes out. And uh, that was his struggle for the movie, the funny comedy, The Christmas Story. Next to that is the marquee poster from the motion picture Tombstone, starring, you'll see them all there, uh, here's uh, Val Kilmer and Kurt Russell, who played Doc Holliday, amongst others. Kurt uh, comes here to the Doc Holliday Museum and walks through it and is told uh, owner uh, Billy Boat that he uh, really enjoyed this exhibit. And, and uh, spends well over an hour here when he comes and visits. Next. This case has a number of relics in it, which we think you'll find very interesting when you come to the museum. Up top here, the guns of the OK Corral fight. Now, this pistol on the right is a duplicate produced by the Franklin Mint of the revolver that Doc Holliday used during the gunfight. Below it is the revolver that White Earp used during the gunfight. It's a Schofield. Now, in the movie Tombstone, Kurt Russell used a Colt Bunt Bunt and Long Barrel pistol, which you'll see here in this case. And you can see on the handle, it's engraved to Wyatt Earp from the, the grateful citizens of Dodge City. And then you can see a picture of Kurt behind it holding the Bunt line uh, from the movie. Below that, these are original uh, gambler's kits, complete gambler's kit. I'm not sure that Doc would have had anything like that because he probably was more interested in making money than having this night kid. This belonged to a Mississippi Riverboat Gambler's complete set from the Push Dagger and uh, Derringer to his chips, uh, the cards, uh, a whiskey flask, uh, bone dominoes, and up top is a push dagger, which is very unusual because in this push dagger, which was used for one thing, they would tie them into their boots, uh, and that was to kill your opponent. And oftentimes these gamblers were using marked cards, of which that is a complete set of marked cards. Uh, and uh, this push dagger has in the handle of the gambler's original two dice. Very rare. Below that is a tribute pistol to the sub cavalry, and next to that is another uh, 45 caliber uh, pistol uh, commemorative for Doc Holliday. Below that is a gunfighter's uh, rig being in Sioux by the Sioux Indians. And what's interesting is what's engraved into the handle. Uh, this gunfighter thought he was pretty slick because it says, be not afraid of any man, no matter what his size, when danger beckons, call on me and I will equalize. But he could have been that good because now I've got the pistol and he lost his own. There's uh, handcuffs on each side. Below that, you'll see the shaving kit here. One of my family's relatives was a, name, a man named Albert Billicky. Albert Billicky owned the Cosmopolitan Hotel in Tombstone, Arizona. When Wyatt's family was attacked by the Cowboys, Wyatt moved his family into the Cosmopolitan Hotel, and Billicky put him up in room 16. That mug is from room 16, the law 16, the law. No one knows if Wyatt and Doc used as street razor, but they lived in that hotel for a short period of time to make sure that they were safe. And below that are the accoutrements of a tombstone madam. You'll see a complete manicure set, a garter, her parasol, and a hairbrush. And on the left there, you'll see her corset. And you can see that she was either a very small madam or they cinched it up pretty tight because I don't think that's more than that. ball chain from the Yuma Territorial Prison. Doc and Wyatt 
and were accused of murder after the OK trial. Had they been convicted, they would have ended up in a different stone in, in, in a Yuma prison. That is the ball and the chain. Now you can see on this ball and chain, whoever had it on, they escaped and broke the ankle shackle. So they could, uh, because that ball weighs about 25 pounds, and you really can't run too fast when you've got the pound ball and the chain. Next to that, in the top of this case are relics from the Hotel Glenwood. You saw that at the beginning. Everything from a key to uh, uh, serving cups. Below that, these are relics from the Wells Fargo Stagecoach Company. Wells Fargo was one of the many stagecoach companies which competed for the stagecoach concession from Tucson to Tombstone. Um, when the mines in Tombstone decided to begin hauling gold on the stage, that's when the outlaws began to attack because there could be anywhere between $25,000 and $35,000 worth of gold on the stage, protected by the shotgun rider. Now you can see on the top here is the double barrel shotgun from the Tucson to Tombstone stagecoach. And uh, it's pretty well worn. So it must have had some uh, Brummins with a few outlaws that are away. In the bottom down here is a kit, much that uh, uh, Doc would have used as a dentist, which he gave up when he was coming west. Okay. This particular case has the, the doctor's kit, which belonged to George Goodfellow. He was the tombstone physician during the around the gunfight. After the gunfight, Several of the people were wounded. Several were also killed. Good fellow came in and tended to the two Earth brothers, Morgan and Virgil, who were wounded. Uh, uh, Doc Holiday himself, who was raised by a bullet. He, fortunately, good fellow was the leading physician in the Old West for extracting bullets. Now you can see in the center of the case here, there's a tool. That's the tool he used to extract the bullets from the victims. And you can see in the top of that, there's a claw that's actually holding a slug. And below that is a little bottle. Uh, that bottle has engraved on it elixir of opium, which is what he has. Now, as we go back around the museum, probably the favorite, this couple of them, this chair, this dance chair came from uh, Georgia, which is where uh, Doc Holliday was born. A uh, chair like that, Doc probably would have used uh, in his practice when he did that. The centerpiece of the museum are two. This in this case here. What you're seeing. This would describe how they came to be in my possession. You'll see Doc Holliday's pocket watch. On the face of Doc Holliday's pocket watch, it says, John Doc Holliday from your friend Wider, 1881. This uh, explanation will tell you how it came to be in my possession. It's extremely rare and valuable. Next to it is a Aspen City Marshal badge that I got at the same time as I got the pocket watch and the handcuffs that belonged to the Aspen City Marshal back in about 1887. Next to that is the derringer that belonged to Bob Holliday. And on the back strap there, you'll see an engraving that says to Doc from Kate. Kate being Doc's Hungarian went by several names, but most people know her as Katie Melvin. And um, all of you, Josephine and I, and Bill Kite, the Historical Society, and the Billy Cole family, you're all invited to come to the museum, visit the ground floor of the Bullock store, right in downtown Glenwood at 18 Grand. And uh, it's a nice place to bring your family. And uh, we understand from Billy Bullock that when you come into the Bullock's uh, department store, we, the Bullock family has been able to arrange to have one of the original headstones 
when we dumped some of these grave in the front entryway. So if you were able to take pictures uh, of you standing next to Father Dick's headstone without going up to the cemetery where God is allegedly buried. Now over here, the last thing I'll show you is in addition, in addition, tombstone in our, my real life with my lovely wife, Michelle. We, much of this collection is on loan because we want to share it with good people like you. I'm also a Western adventure novelist and member of the Western Writers of America. And in this case here, you'll see some of the hardback books that I've written. These are all set in Tombstone in about the time that the gunfight at the OK Corral occurred. And in this cover right here, you'll see a picture of Michelle, my wife, who uh, plays one of the main characters in the series, a woman named Josephine. And then lastly, on the wall to your right, you will see a picture of Josephine standing with Doc Holliday in the Josephine Saloon in Tombstone. So that's a brief tour of the uh, museum. Again, we're hoping you will come, bring the family, have a good time, and uh, thank you for coming. Thanks for coming. Yeah, and, uh, Stay with